Good morning or evening, <laughs> depending on where you are. Hi. Yeah. Afternoon, I guess, for me at the minute. <laughs> Afternoon. Erica, welcome back. Congratulations. Thank you. See, now I'm curious what the congratulations is for. <laughs> Me too. What did I miss, Erica? Uh, I got married last week. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. So, uh, and hello, Liz. So, Long time no speak. Kirsten. I know. I'll put on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> there you so, go. How's it going? Great. It's going all right. So... You have a very nice background there. I like all that. my posters. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Erica, that's great. Did you do like a COVID? Did you have a COVID ceremony? Small, distanced. Small, distanced in the courthouse or the <laughs> clerk's office with masks. Uh, all that fun. Yeah. All right. Well, you'll have to have a big celebration sometime in the future. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> maybe next year or whatever. Yep. All right, I think we usually just wait a couple minutes. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi Erica. Hi Kirsten. Hey, hey. Hello. Do you know if uh, Howard was going to be able to join today? I was hoping. I saw his PowerPoints or, or whatever, presentation slides, so I was hoping to discuss that. I see Jim. Hey, folks. Hey, Robert. How are you doing? Yes, again. Shall How's we get do off, you think? Yes, we can get started. Um, I Let me pull up the agenda. I know. Uh, wrong document. There we go. So now we had a few things on there. So, and I, Liz had mentioned on our channel. So, hi, Liz. Hi, Daniel. I see you're on as well. Um, we had that as one of the first topics for today. And after that, we'll go through, you know, some updates uh, that I have wanted to discuss on the policy report. Anyone else have any other topics to add to the agenda for today? All right, so then let's get started. So maybe Liz and Daniel, welcome, and I'll hand off to you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, Daniel and I didn't completely uh, confer too much on this beforehand, but uh, I've just been showing a presentation about Starboard to a different audience. So I have a slide in front of me. So why don't I share that? And, uh, and then I'm gonna ask Daniel to actually demonstrate sort of what we have. So the motivation behind our Starboard project was to say, we have all these security tools, Aqua tools, other third party tools, open source tools, commercial tools, and they all have you know, different user interfaces. They all create reports in different formats. And this is non-ideal for the, the user. So the idea with Starboard is to bring the reports into custom resource definitions inside Kubernetes. 
and we have starboard which is a cube control plugin to provide a common cli into the different tools and we started off with uh, four different types of security report that we've got in the initial release of starboard it's very much you know experimental but uh, you know that's how you how you find out what works right by trying it so we currently uh, support vulnerability information from trivi which is our open source vulnerability scanner uh, configuration audits from the fairwinds polaris tool and then then uh, qbench cis benchmark reports and Cube Hunter, kind of, it's like basic penetration testing for a Kubernetes cluster. So we pulled all those different tools, and the idea is it would be extensible to other kinds of tool. You know, we'd love to have you know, lots of different security tools here. That information gets populated into the CRDs, and as I'm sure Daniel will show you, we use labels to associate the security reports with the Kubernetes resources that they relate to. So uh, hopefully that kind of set the scene and maybe Daniel, I can uh, ask you to show, uh, show it in action. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, thanks for the introduction. I think it's like a great summary. And now I will show you um, how, it, how it goes. Like, can, I, can I ask one question? Sure. Um, the config uh, tools that you have, what, what exactly are they checking in terms of configuration? I think I'll be able to show you uh, like a report and then we can walk through okay. what type of things it, it, it is checking. Okay. All right, so uh, is this uh, screen big enough for everyone, for everyone? Yes. I'm running a developer a cluster kind with a, a bunch of nodes. And as Liz mentioned, we have a CLI interface for Starboard. Uh, you can install it actually with Crew, which is a package manager for plugins. I have already done that, but just to show you uh, that we already integrated there. So this is the, uh, the main interface for uh, interacting with uh, security tools. Uh, but then instead of learning each and every tool, its interface, input and output uh, specification, uh, we wanted to make it easier. So for example, as a first step, uh, you need to initialize the starboard. It's a one-time init command. I will explain in a moment why we need that. But actually in this verbose output, you see that we have to create a CRDs, right? We need to send to Kubernetes API the definitions of the reports that we require. Um, just to have a closer look into those CRDs, what we currently have, API. So as you can see, we have four CRDs. Some of them are namespace, some of them are a cluster scope. If we walk through them, it's like a CIS Kubernetes benchmark. Those are typically run on uh, nodes. I will run such a scanner in a, in a second. Um, so you run it on a node. Since node, a native uh, resource, is cluster scoped, also this report is cluster scoped. Uh, then we have config audit uh, reports. Those are generated by Polaris. Those are namespace because we associate them with a workload. So uh, since workloads such as deployments or stateful sets or jobs or cron jobs are namespace, also this report is namespaced. We have also kubehunter reports. There is no such a built-in resources cluster in Kubernetes. Uh, but anyway, this will be like a namespaced, uh, sorry, cluster scoped uh, report. And then for vulnerabilities, uh, the better name would probably be vulnerabilities report. Uh, but this one is namespace, right? We could uh, check for vulnerabilities, a container, uh, images of a given workload. So now, once we initialize the uh, the starboard, we could create a deployment. Let's call it Nginx. Use some uh, image that we know is vulnerable, and now we could use starboard star 
my board, find rooms. Uh, so now we are asking Starboard to find vulnerabilities, right? Uh, behind the scenes, we will create a Kubernetes job. And this job will run 3D, uh, a containerized version of 3D uh, to pull an image, scan it, and create an instance of the vulnerability resource. Um, and I will also show you that we are using label selectors to link back the report to the um, to the actual controller. I'm not sure if it's visible, but if we say like a star report and source name, I think this will be visible, right? So we have created an instance. Uh, so far we are using a, a UUIDs for the instances, which is maybe not the best. Uh, but we are currently thinking about like a deterministic names. Anyway, the, the label is something that links it to the, to the deployment. Uh, we also, we are also going to set the owner reference to the underlying deployment. So whenever the deployment goes away, we will also clean up thanks to the Kubernetes garbage collector. Um, let me just describe and show you this, uh, report. So those are the labels. And if we scroll down to the report, that's the, the, the report stanza is where the report starts. So we have the artifacts, as you can see, we have scanned the engines 1.16. Uh, we use 3D version 0.9.1, and we found a bunch of vulnerabilities. It's just a quick summary, but then you can also scroll and, and see what are the details. So in the similar way, we could use Starboard to um find config misconfig like in potentially insecure configuration of your deployment uh, descriptor so if we say starboard polaris probably we will may change it to some like a similar command to define vulnerabilities like uh, config audit uh, but for now it's just polaris for the lack of better name and also we are working with Fairwinds uh, folks to specify the deployment. It's not ready yet because the Polaris did not allow us. Polaris is scanning the whole cluster, all workloads across the cluster. Uh, but once we run it, you will see the reports um, showing up. Again, uh, the Starboard doesn't have the logic how to scan it. We are using a third party scanner. And now we should be able to see instances of the um, config audits. Uh, so if we take and describe config audit uh, report for our engines deployment, you will see that there is a, oops, sorry you will see that there is a report and a Polaris, uh, we are actually reusing the model uh, that uh, Fairwind folk came up with. It's, uh, it's uh, checking the uh, deployment descriptor at, at the pod level and then at the container level. So um, since I created a deployment with a single container called Nginx, uh, we have a set of container checks. For example, uh, Polaris checks whether the, we are using a deterministic tag, not the latest, uh, right? Then there are some checks for security, for example, whether we are running as a root or, or not. So there is a bunch of uh, settings that usually by default, uh, are by default in Kubernetes are least secure, right? So this is kind of a host port set, um, et cetera. Uh, I think for the, for the latest list of all the checks, uh, the best uh, source is a Polaris uh, CLI. Uh, because again, as I said, we are not adding any additional things. We are reusing what they output. Uh, some checks make sense at the pod level, such as host uh, PID and uh, IPC set. So those are reported as a, as a separate section. Um, before moving forward, so those were uh, namespaced uh, CRDs and namespaced checks. 
checks. Uh, we we can scan with the Polaris and 3D uh, each and every type of, of a controller. It can be stateful set, demo set, uh, replica set, even uh, replication controller. Uh, we also have an extension to the Octant. Uh, Octant is this dashboard from PMware. Uh, it allows us to display this information in maybe a little bit nicer way, right? Sometimes this uh, terminal output is not very readable, especially if you have multiple uh, reports, multiple containers, but uh, since this is a CRD and we use a Kubernetes API to read and write data, uh, we could easily extend uh, dashboards with uh, UI components. And we picked uh, Octan because it has a nice plugin API. So here you can see the vulnerability report for the engine's container. And behind the scenes, the implementation is very simple because we are just using label selectors. If we go here, we also display the config audit report. This is not something that is shipped with Octant, but thanks to uh, our plugin, probably the thing that I should have mentioned in the beginning, we have a plugin which is called Starboard and then this plugin allows us to uh, add different sections in the UI. And to complete the demo, let me show you how we display uh, Kubebench reports. Again, the same mechanism, we are creating a Kubernetes job. This job has a special command. Uh, usually we are using the containerized version of the scanner. Uh, so in this case, we used Kubebench. Uh, and then we generated the CIS cube bench report. Uh, currently, there is a little bit inconsistency in the latest version uh, because it's still in experimental phase. Some of the resources that we create have uh, like a timestamp appended, but recently we realized that probably we'll just store the latest and greatest scan report. We don't want to use a CRD at CD as a database for all historical data. So you will see like a little bit of inconsistency if you try it on your own, but eventually we will make it consistent. Like either use deterministic names or UUIDs, append or do not append the, the timestamp, but just for your uh, information. And I could also run cube hunter. Cube hunter. And again, we're running cube hunter for the whole cluster. And then we could get the, let me describe this one. Cube Hunter cluster. So again, there is a bunch of similar, uh, same actually properties, uh, but um, in general, uh, each tool reports uh, vulnerabilities in its own uh, schema. So we don't have a generate schema yet. Uh, and probably we won't have for uh, each and every scanner, but uh, you could access this information from the terminal. And also we have integrated it uh, with the Octant. So in Octant, I can also see the, um, I can also display the CIS benchmarks report here. Since this is a work, uh, worker node, Kubebench automatically detects that it is a worker, a worker node and, and it is running the tests appropriate for the worker node. For uh, Kubehunter reports, uh, we do have this separate UI component. And uh, as you can see, Kubehunter found three low uh, vulnerabilities. And with that, I think it's all uh, from the CLI standpoint. Uh, we are also working on an operator so all the commands that I was demonstrating, we would like to automate. So whenever there's a new deployment created, we could run uh, the scanner. So Starboard CLI is a kind of a command line interface, but also the library that we want to reuse to build uh, automation around that. Um, so yes, uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, I think we'll try to answer them. Yes, yeah, so a few questions, um, and thank you, Daniel and Liz. Uh, good, good demo and great project. Um, 
So it seems like, I guess, first off, just to clarify my understanding of some of the goals and what you just demonstrated. So it seems like, um, you know, the, the goal here is to try and give a common way of running different, you know, security tools and obviously collecting data from them and uh, a way to output them in the same manner, right? So because the alternative would be somebody could go run each one of these tools separately, but this gives one unified interface to perhaps, I don't know if it also does installation of these tools and upgrades, things like that, or if it's more about just running in than gathering the data from these tools. Um, I think we wanted to focus on the on the model uh, rather than <clears throat> uh, how these tools are, are run. So uh, essentially, you know, the, the most important part is to find a, a common schema for the vulnerability report because we found many integrations, uh, and I think we started with a hardware, <clears throat> which is this, you know, uh, container image registry, and then we had the, the same uh, challenge. Uh, we were trying to define a vulnerability model or model for the vulnerability report. So then the other third party uh, security vendors could implement their scanners. So actually what we've done as a first step in the, in the Starboard POC was to integrate uh, 3D, but we also want to advertise and promote this model and saying, hey, this is good enough or maybe generic enough, okay, kind of a common denominator for all the vulnerability scanners that you could plug in easily, I don't know, Claire, Ancor, maybe some commercial scanners. So that was the goal, not how to have a generic jobs runner, but have a common model. So then we could, you know, sum up, uh, summarize, transform this model, right? We don't have to learn what is the output of Claire, what is the output of 3D, but we, you know, we can discuss about the vulnerabilities in terms of this common model. I think also one of the, the side effects of taking that security information and putting it into Kubernetes native resources is that we can take advantage of RBAC. And that's something that our customer design partners have really, they were really, really excited about because they can basically give access to you know, a developer team right. will only have access to a certain application namespace. They can Absolutely, see the security yeah. reporting just associated mm -hmm. with that. Right. Right. So it's certainly making that accessible makes sense. But it, it, again, like from the output and what you're showing here, so there's some common structure to the reports, but then each scanner or each engineer is plugging in its own custom data um, as part of the output, right? So. Uh, is is that correct in terms of how so, this works today? Yes, but we would hope that, I think there's a distinction between uh, different types of security tool, you know, a vulnerability scanner does not produce the same kind of output right. as a benchmark, but vulnerability scanners all produce something pretty similar. You know, they might not have all exactly the same fields, but as we know from the, the work in Harbor, there's a lot of commonality. So it would be great, I think, if we can establish a common uh, definition mm -hmm. for that, and then people can plug in whatever uh, scanner suits their needs. Right. Quick question R from, from me, if you don't mind. Um, so Liz, have you seen the um, container security operator that the Red Hat, Quay, and Claire team worked on? I haven't. No. Okay, so I'm, I just uh, reached out on Slack to our team um, because I think I'd love to have them collaborate. So, so kind of what they did was very similar to what I'm seeing here. It's initially focused on vulnerability, and and it initially is works just with Quay and Claire, but the intent was to make it pluggable for any scanner, and so. I think we have an opportunity to leverage each other's thinking to get common, you know, common formatting and, and content, et cetera. Yes. yes. Uh, I can also comment on that because actually I was playing with the uh, container security operator and cool. uh, 
And the difference, and this is actually a good point, uh, why, uh, and maybe explain why they are diff different. As sure. you can see, the, the vulnerability uh, CR, uh, in our case, is uh, namespaced because of the RBAC that Liz mentioned, right? Which is great, it, yeah. It looks like data redundancy, and it was very tempting to store it at, at the cluster level because usually you will maybe have in the multiple namespaces the same image with the same digest running. So it seems maybe this is wasteful, but on the other hand, if we make it cluster scope, we don't have so many flexibility to giving permissions to some development teams to check uh, what kind of vulnerabilities they have. So the, the operator uh, that uh, Red Hat team has is actually storing the vulnerabilities um, which are linked not to the workload, not to, to, to the Kubernetes uh, container, but they are associated with the image digest. And there's a kind of a naming convention where um, they're using like a SHA, um, uh, SHA number to, to name the resource, right? So that's how they, they don't use the label selectors, but they could find out uh, whether the given image was scanned or not. And the other thing is that uh, indeed you need a registry which has a vulnerability API, right? So if you have a Docker Hub or your workload is running an image from the Docker Hub, the Docker Hub API doesn't have yet the vulnerabilities endpoint. So it won't get this information ready. We wanted to have something more uh, generic. Yeah, no, I and and honestly, I um, was not deeply involved with the CSO with the container security operator. So definitely sounds like I, I can't imagine, though, that Red Hat would not have applied our own RBAC to the results because everything we do con considers multi-tenancy in the cluster. But but I just was thinking I'd love to to kind of have the folks who did look at that and think about it you know, collaborate here. Um, and so I, I just gave them a heads up. So hopefully they can get involved and, you know, maybe right. we don't, eventually, you know, maybe eventually we move more towards the starboard like design for all I know, right? So. I think another thing that um, yeah. I would like to touch on, and I think this is particularly in the light of the work that this group has been doing around the kind of common policy CR. So although, from the work we've been doing, we've come down on the on the sort of belief that we need more than one type of report for the output from different tools. I think there is a summarization that probably fits into some like we, we're bouncing ideas around now of, you know, something that takes the summaries from all the reports, perhaps all the deployments in uh, a namespace and aggregates the results and knowing things like uh, how to interpret um, the, the summaries from each of the different types of reports to come up with a sort of single view of this namespace has an issue, you need to go and address it. You know, right. these namespaces are fine, They're, there's nothing to worry about. Um, and I think that would be a really valuable thing to have a common understanding of. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, this is Jaya. So I think uh, I agree with the with that, Liz. I th uh, and uh, so the way I look at it is there are different controls and Kristen kind of drilled down into the vulnerability scanning control, right? That's just one type of control. There are several others. And it is good to agree on a common format for how each of those controls provide all the details. But then, you know, for a centralized management offering, like what, uh, the, that's the focus of my my area, right? Which is uh, that it had uh, advanced, advanced cluster management uh, pro product, which also ties to our open cluster management community project. Uh, our focus is on managing a bunch of different Kubernetes clusters, right, uh, OpenShift, and others, and then being able to define policies that get propagated to those as well as retrieving the results back. And then when you get a particular result back, then when you drill down, right, then now you have to get into the details of a specific control, right? And I think right. that's where agreeing on a standard format so that 
it doesn't matter you know whether you're using Trivi, whether you're using Claire, you know whatever scanning tool you are using you're still returning the results in a format that is easily understandable right so i think i think there's value for both both the summarization view as well as the drill down view right i think both it's good right. to summarize on both yeah absolutely T totally agree and i think the problem that we were trying to solve and starting maybe with the uh, i guess the highest order or the highest level is where we started with this working group is how do you give admins as well as workload owners, right? So that was very important. We had quite a lot of debate on whether policy reports and violations should be namespaced or not. And I strongly agree that they should be because these these should be visible to the workload owners. Um, and so, so the idea was to give one common way uh, one other interesting thing is we had a discussion just a few weeks ago on what are the different categories and you know for now we had security as a large placeholder but I think what you just showed you've done a good job of like categorizing the different tools in terms of whether it's vulnerability scanning configurations uh, other things like CIS runtime benchmarks etc right so and there could be more we we wouldn't right. say that we've you know necessarily yeah. found everything but it's it seemed like a a good starting set. Yeah. Uh, so one question. So let's say if, if somebody wants to add a new engine or um, scanner to this, what are the steps? It, does it involve code changes? Is it, is it, you know, runtime extensions? How do you plug in to this tool? Uh, so I can answer that. So this is the main repository. So currently it's a CLI. Uh, so the, the executable binary that I use uh, for the demo. But also, we, if you want to implement a scanner in Golang, you could reuse the code again. So we have this code generated, right? So you could programmatically create instances of those four uh, types of reports. So you don't need to you know, do the plumbing. Um, and then also, if you don't want to use Golang for some reason, uh, we believe that this is like a, something in progress. But I would love to have something which is called custom security resources spec and that's the entry point for you right you could right. use whatever language you have as long as we know that okay this is the report this is a uh, mm -hmm. the payload and we also need to explain a little bit uh, semantics right all these things such as label selectors naming conventions this is not documented you need to right. reverse engineer it from the code but if there is, if it is specified uh, how do we you know why it's namespace, what it's, why it's cluster scope, how to link it back, how to drill down from this overview to a particular workload, then I believe that's the only thing we need. Right. Yeah, and the reason why I was asking is a, a while ago within the working group, we'd also discuss what parts of a policy or, you know, we were obviously thinking more about policy engines, but it applies, it's, you know, as you've shown, like more broadly to other security tools as well is what parts could be standardized, right? Some of the machinery around launching, running, um, and then collecting some level of data from them, right? And we, we decided to start with what seemed like the easiest at that time, which was, um, you know, the, the final output, the high level output. Um, but yeah, it would be very interesting to think of this almost as a, so kubectl of course allows like binary plugins with crds you know um and i, I i'm assuming customer uh, custom security resource definitions is meant to be like a crd but for security tools so yeah that would be very interesting to explore if this could be turned into some kind of a plugin model where uh, anybody can come and contribute a uh, engine without having to change like the core code in in starboard and, yeah, and i don't think we're exactly there today but that is definitely where we want to get to yeah <laughs> yeah you know documentation a little bit of work right. to do there but uh yeah that's that's certainly where we'd love to be yeah and also i wanted to mention that for, we haven't done that for each and every type of a report but at least for the vulnerabilities we also have an open api spec so that's one of the safety nets right so if there is someone who wants to integrate with starboard as i said today is probably the only way is to do it programmatically we don't have a uh, pluggable interfaces but at least we have done this part of 
all right, let's define the vulnerability item because each time there is an integration, we are reinventing the wheel. Here you have the schema, you just need to transform uh, the uh, proprietary output to the standardized form. Um, so yes, you could also apply it directly from the from this repository. And uh, you know, we, we'd be open to people telling us we've missed things in these definitions. It's you know, it's a first pass. But ideally, we'd be able to. Different tools would be able to reuse the same definition, so we don't have to keep having, you know, lots of very similar but not quite the same. Of course. Right. Yeah, and maybe last comment before I for, forget, uh, because we put some thoughts into the number of CRDs, whether it should be one generic map of maps of kind of thing. And when I look at that was like, realistically, how many cube benches do we have? We have one from Aqua, maybe there is a one from Docker, which is using, uh, I think some shell scripting. So there are two, there won't be too many third party tools doing the same thing. I don't know what can be done better. Probably it's just a, a, just a matter of maintaining the existing tools and adding checks to the CIS benchmark spec. For vulnerabilities, I think this is very dynamic, let's call it market. So I expect there will be like a potentially lots of third party integrations. For config audits, something what Polaris Fairwinds folks did, I think it's super generic as you saw, uh, it's, you know, just checking the deployment descriptor like a pod template at the mainly looking at the security context of the pod and then containers, right? So also I believe that we could bend majority of existing tools to fit into this model. But this is kind of an approach, like how many tools and, uh, and how to integrate them into, into this common format. Uh, we were able to somehow manage it as it is now. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, have you guys also listened? And I'm sorry, I haven't, there are a lot of these meetings I haven't ma made, haven't attended. But so when we think about KubeBench and you were listing, you know, kind of what's available. So you, you folks might know, right, because Aqua and Red Hat work together a fair amount that, that um, OpenSCAP is, is a key way for um, US government customers, a key scanning tool, SCAP. And so Red Hat is, and I know this has been discussed with this group, Red Hat is investing in a compliance operator that will do OpenSCAP checks or will run OpenSCAP and use SCAP content to do various types of compliance checks. So that's other, um, I'll find the repo, Eric. Um, so that's another um, area that it would be great to collaborate on. I know not everybody wants yeah. to write SCAP. I wish we didn't need to write SCAP, right? <laughs> so. I don't even know what SCAP is. Um, did, is, uh, it, is stands, <laughs> it stands for Soft, uh, Security Content Automation Protocol. Okay. And it's a, it's a NIST approved protocol um, for, for types of security scanning. You can use it for vulnerability scans actually also. Um, and CIS uh, also creates SCAP content um, for their tooling, which their, their benchmark mm. is um, under Creative Commons, but their tooling is proprietary. I see. So each benchmark would map to uh, a SCAP? Oh, rule thank you, or whoever definition? found the compliance operator. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry, I go ahead. This, this, this. Yeah, so just my question was whether each benchmark, like a CIS benchmark, would map to something like a SCAP definition or rule? Um, or? Individual controls would map to individual SCAP rules. Okay. Um, so that, and then you would have a, the concept of a profile that is a collection of rules. Got it. And okay. Jaya, correct me if I've misstated anything. I think Jay, I had to drop, uh, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So does a, a SCAP, I don't know, item, I don't know what the right term is, does that um, typically run like a, a shell command or something? It, it runs uh, the open SCAP scanner. So if you were to Google open SCAP, it is a, it is a open source uh, scanner, scanning tool. Um, and again, um, yep. Thanks. So uh, NIST certified. So. 
but then within that tool how yep. does it perform each individual check um so we might need some folks from the engineering team who aren't here today as best i can tell unless unless erica's up to date on this there but but again each uh content um you know there's a set of of content uh, rules that are called um, and uh, right and then there's a, an output report afterwards um, so uh, those are written in XCDDF I always get the acronym wrong um, but you can run a, a set of individual rules so OpenSCAP knows how to work with SCAP content um, and it runs those those rules and the goal of a profile right is to up level that so that you don't have to select a bunch of individual rules um, but you can say I want to run you know the CIS OpenShift profile uh, or I want to run the NIST 853 profile and the reason Red Hat invests in SCAP is because it's NIST certified our uh, federal customers US federal customers um, accept this type of content um, and and so you know honestly nobody would want to use scap if they didn't have to so. <laughs> yeah i believe it runs as a, a da daemon set with all the thank nodes. you erica yeah okay yeah that would be interesting to understand and compare then and then as you were saying Daniel then look at the results and see what the commonality is and similarly for configuration tools I, I agree at a high level like whether it's you know Polaris or there's Kiverno or there's OPA gatekeeper which all you know I think all of them also can act as admission controllers as well as configuration scanners or at least Kiverno and Polaris can not certain about gatekeeper uh, whether it does background scans or not um, but yeah some commonality across those would be interesting to explore as well I think that's a, another thing worth just sort of highlighting about starboard is that starboard is reporting on the security status of running resources so starboard doesn't right. have a role as like admission control right it's, it's kind of post Post deployment, if you like, um, it, I just felt like that was worth separating yeah. from the kind of pre-admission control right. checks. Now they might have a lot in common. You might do the same check as part of right. admission control or before deployment. So you might yes, the in the CI/CD pipeline, yes. you're right. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, any other? questions on starboard or uh, any anything else daniel or liz that you'd like to share maybe last comment from my side uh, so you have time to think about your question uh, today as i said we are also working on the operator and we are watching a native or built-in resources uh, then if you want to integrate with things like scap or maybe some more generic forms we could also watch the uh, custom resources that we have created, right? We don't have to do this in this first reconciliation loop, right? We can keep it simple and then like cascade this information or maybe use some existing upstream uh, tools that do collect this data from the cluster. That's why we don't want to have a history. And right. I think it's also to try out or write a quick POC and testing whether the vulnerability report or some other report that we have today fits into the schema that you already uh, right. thought about. Uh, so just to mention that I think we can play and, and see how it works because I okay. believe that at the end we might have this type, strictly typed reports for some use cases, right. but it doesn't stop us from having something generic. They can live oh, together. Absolutely. Yeah, and some way, like one of the discussion, uh, Jaya had brought this up a few meetings ago or, and I think um, you know others on the team might uh, remember this too is, um, there was a discussion on how do you link from, you know, from the high level report to details, right? Where should the user go to find details? Is that like a reference to another CR in the cluster? Is that a URL? Um, and we, you know, we kind of uh, didn't have a conclusive opinion on that. We wanted to keep it, uh, have a field where somebody for each, uh, each entry in the policy report could say, go here for details. 
Um, but yeah, that, that's something that we could look at and perhaps the details is another custom resource produced by the um, engine. Yeah, that's a good point. But also I remember from Harbor and this defining the common scheme, this is also a pretty big constraint on the third party scanner because not every scanner is able to provide sure. such a different information. So just just as a right. heads up, it's for example, like in Polaris today, as you saw, we can scan the whole cluster and only mm -hmm. we requested a, a change, like an enhancement to the Polaris to allow us to specify a single workload. So then it makes simpler to, you know, configure right. permissions for the tool, et cetera. Uh, but this is also something to, to keep in mind. That. Okay. All right. I, I think that sounds like a good next step to see, you know, if again, the policy report uh, schema that we've been working on, if that fits in into, you know, your thoughts and view of a high level model to aggregate some of these results. And we could try them out across some, some of the categories you've defined and Certainly, this is very much work in progress for us too. So happy to get the feedback and inputs and see how we could make this better and something that's usable for everyone. Great. Well, thanks for the, the opportunity to show us to show you what we've been doing. Oh, absolutely. It's great stuff. Uh, okay, so I can yeah. quick quickly talk about uh, just a few updates and if anyone else has anything. Uh, we'll try and save some time for that as well. So one thing I wanted to um, show, and this is in actually our repo. So if you go to the work group policy prototypes, um, you know, Yuvraj from my team figured out how to uh, generate, um, I guess, API docs. So this was something that's uh, not supported right now directly in Kube Builder, but there are some PRs and uh, he, you know, like based on uh, some other submissions, what we were able to do is actually take the, um, the the API or the CRD definition and then convert it into a more readable document, right? So this is here it, to it's HTML as it's checked in into the repo right now. So you have to kind of use like one of these preview things, and we'll add a link to the README page. But I think this was the one step that. Um, at least, um, you know, I, I wanted to make sure we, we complete before we, um, you know, lock the document and move over to GitHub in terms of managing comments and changes and other submissions. So at this point, you know, we have the basic CR in, in GitHub, we have samples and I know uh, Erica, someone from, you know, JS team also submitted a sample. I have a sample for Kiverno. So, and you know, it, we, what we'll, um, start collecting is more samples. So definitely Daniel and Liz, if there's something you want to submit for starboard and how it could um, you know, fit in into this model, feel free to just create a PR. Um, and at that time, we'll then start going through and you know, we can even, what I was thinking is we'll add a unit test, um, which will take each sample and validate it against the CR and make sure that it you know, complies. And, uh, that will help uh, in the submission process itself. Any any thoughts, questions on that? And you know, this uh, of course, as um, I think, as Kube Builder sort of mature or adopts like this document standard, will uh, will you know reuse or switch to whatever they're supporting. But for now, we're just uh, using. Um, someone had submitted a PR to this tool, which adapts to the Kube Builder model. So that seems to work reasonably well for us at the moment. That looks really cool. Yeah, it's much more readable than the open API schema, right? And um, hopefully it will, you know, let, let folks go through quickly and uh, provide comments, et cetera. Okay. We have so one open PR, right? Yes. You want to discuss? Um, it's a somewhat minor, but I believe there's one open comment on it, and that is using selectors. Right. Yes. So there was one comment I think you had submitted on when should we use the scope versus resource. Um, yeah. So I can I'll uh, I can add in some. Yeah, I'm trying to think what's 
probably the best thing to do is just add this to the, now that we have the CR and the ability to generate documentation, I'll update the CR itself and add in some um, discussion there. And that, that could become our standard sort of documentation format for, for this. Okay, um, there yeah. were a few other things. So I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead, Erica. I, if you just let me know when you have that in, I'll make okay. sure to give the LGTM. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and I think the only other thing on the PRs, I think Robert, you you still have some, I guess, some things to complete to get uh, you into the approvers list. So let me know oh, if you need. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look. Sorry about that. No worries. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get those done. And I think um, that's all I had to discuss. Um, Erica, Robert, anyone else, anything else uh, that we should cover? Uh, you know, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Nothing for me. Uh, we have, which Howard wasn't able to make it, but he's at least back and active a little bit. Um, uh, going the KubeCon presentation that we have to record. If, um, so I'll be getting in contact with him about that. If anyone has specific items they would like to see discussed in the deep dive policy deep dive, let us know. Yeah. Okay. So that that um, I I I did mark up, uh, add some comments to that, and added a little bit of, of detail on some of the slides, and I'll I'll carve out some more time. Uh, what is there a deadline? That you're I believe it has to be recorded by the thirty first. Okay. I am a procrastinator, so as long as you get it by the thirtieth. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Try to get it before that. Yeah. And that's July. So. This is yes. KubeCon EU, which is mid-August or so, right? Uh, something like that. I think the deadline, right. though, for the recordings was the 31st okay. of July. All right. OK. Yeah, I know Howard had sent me a link also. So I'll, I'll take a look and you know, uh, add some information, or you know, we can collaborate and get that done. Awesome. awesome. Any other items anyone has or anything we can help with? Going once, twice. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, look forward to for talking more. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.